Welcome everyone and thank you for attending today's webcast, Flirting with Disaster Recovery, Maintaining Your Vault Data. Our presenter today is Kendrick Cooper. He's a solutions engineer with Hagerman & Company. Before we get started, I'll let you know that you're in listening-only mode. If you have questions during the presentation, you can type those into the question panel on the right-hand side of your screen, and Kindred will address them at the end of the presentation. And as we close down the session today, you'll be prompted to fill out a survey, and we do ask that you take a few moments to fill that out for us. Additionally, all registrants will receive a follow-up email containing a link for the recording of this presentation. With that, I will hand things over to Kindred. Thank you, Ashley. Greetings, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's presentation, Flirting with Disaster. We're going to be discuss discussing the ins and outs of your vault data and how to obtain backup copies of that vault data as well as to restore the backups in case of a disaster. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and just jump right into the mix here. Uh, Obviously, this slide here is for those that can't hear me, but it's also a good slide to point out. At the end of this session, we will address the questions, and you have the GoToMeeting Manager on your screen. You can input the questions there, and when that time comes, that's where the answers will show up. So, leading into it, let's get a little bit of background of Hagerman and Company. We've been in business for 32 years, give or take. We've got offices scattered around the Midwest and Southeast and even some offices in the California area. We've been doing data management for two-thirds of our life in business. So we've been around the block a time or two with data management, disaster recovery, restoring data, backing up data. We've done well over 800 customer implementations of Vault, and we've been uh, in the software development side of the business for about 15 years. <clears throat> so getting down to the root of all this with your vault data, what is that data? What does it mean to you? For every company I've ever stepped foot in, it is the lifeblood of that company. If that data is lost or destroyed, then there's a huge amount of money that goes into trying to get back to where you were, either through recreating that data from scratch or trying to salvage paper print copies of that data and rebuilding it that way. It represents everything that is critical to your business. <clears throat> Without that engineering data, your business may very well cease to exist. Uh, it's one of the most valuable parts of the company. Uh, again, without it, you can't find drawings and documents. You can't build your products. You can't service your customers. And there's a big question on whether or not you could even stay in business if you lost that information. Looking at some statistics, about half of the firms out there only have one copy of their business data. Sometimes it's backed up on some kind of local server or maybe a tape backup. Sometimes that's locked away in a fireproof vault or a safe. Other companies have kept copies off-site in data centers or they upload to some secure cloud location. Or we've even had a few smaller companies that actually get a bank vault and take the tape backups or DVD backups and lock them in the bank vault. You know, as long as you have some kind of disaster recovery. About 42% of businesses have had some kind of loss of that data. <clears throat> and when you have that loss, even if you have a backup, even going through that restore process, there's still a cost involved, yes. Uh, you're going to have the, the time and resources uh, factored in for cost on what it took to get that backup restored, what it took to get everything back up and running. That minimal cost pales into comparison when you're talking about losing everything permanently and having to start over, having to start over from scratch. <clears throat> Looking at the worldwide impact, uh, data loss, they put the estimate close to $2 trillion. That's a massive amount of money. About 10 to 15% of vault customers don't have a good backup. 
I kind of shot low there. I, I tend to think it might be even a little higher, maybe 20 to 25 percent in some extreme cases. But we'll say on average 10 to 15 percent, no backup of their vault. When we come into a customer situation, one of the first things that we look at before we ever upgrade an existing vault, we will look to see when the last backup was. And it is always a fear that sets in when we see that no backup was ever ran. So step one of what we do is we will get a validated backup before we ever touch that server to do anything. So what needs to be backed up in that process? <clears throat> the three critical things are your Knowledge Vault Master database, your actual vault databases, in case you have more than one, and I'll go ahead and throw in the Content Center databases under the assumption that somebody has created a custom Content Center. The factory Content Center databases, the out-of-the-box ones, those don't necessarily have to be backed up. You can download those all day long off of the Autodesk website. But a custom content center, that's something that has, that has been tweaked, and that certainly needs to be backed up. Those are in red because the standard vault backup process grabs those automatically. There's nothing special you have to do. When you run a vault backup, those are the ones you get. In addition to those, you might want to back up some other items. And this is looking at a full system-wide disaster recovery situation. The SQL Server system databases, the master and the MSDB files. If you've done any kind of configuration to your SQL Server timeout settings or third-party plug-in application settings, then you'll want to also back up your web.config file. That can be located under the installation directory for Vault under the Autodesk folder, the ADMS version number, server slash web slash services, and you'll see web.config right there. Also, you may want to back up the file store. The file store is automatically included as part of the top three uh, backup options. But some companies like to go ahead and say, okay, well, you know, database corruption, that can happen. File corruption, that can happen. So they'll have two, three, sometimes four or more backup copies of their vault data. And that will sometimes include the file store folder, which is separate from the database folder. So how do you go about making a backup? You can use the built-in tool set that's inside the Autodesk Data Management Server Console. It will back up the vault databases and the file store. You could also use a third-party tool to run the backup. The kicker here is you have to be careful and grab certain pieces of information. Everything from the previous slide, obviously. You want to back up all of the SQL databases, and you want to back up your file store. So you would grab everything from this slide. That would be the third-party option. We have a lot of co companies that will take and they'll run Veritas Backup or Carbonite or some other third-party backup software, and they will try to do a simple vault restore just using that backup, and it doesn't work that way. The vault restore process looks for a certain set of files and folder structure in order to actually restore that database and the file store associated with it. Using a third-party method, there's more work involved, not only just getting the information backed up, but also getting it in place to do a restore. <clears throat> it can be a little tricky at times, so if you run into that situation, by all means, let us know. We're happy to help. Uh, plus, you want to back up your SQL system databases, and again, back up your web.config file. You can automate the backup process. Uh, the backups from the ADMS console are designed to run from a batch file, and you can run that batch file through a task, a Windows task scheduler uh, set, 
you can schedule these backups through whatever interval is appropriate for your setup. Uh, you may want to do it weekly, you may want to do it bi-weekly, uh, every day, every other day. Uh, there's, with the basic vault version, you're only allowed to do a full backup, and it's an all or nothing process. With the work group and professional versions of vault, you are given the choice to do an incremental backup. And they will occur in between vaults. A lot of times incremental backups are used when the primary vault backup, the full backup, gets so large that it takes hours and hours and hours to back up. So they'll use an incremental in between there. The most important part about all this, backup is, is what you're going to need, but you really don't want to put the fate of your business resting on the shoulders of that backup if you've not tested that backup to make sure it works, make sure it restores properly. So what we do recommend is about once a quarter, at the least maybe uh, twice a year, you want to create essentially a sandbox server, just a test server, a test environment, so you can install Vault, get it configured, and restore that backup. Make sure the backup restores good. If it doesn't restore good, then you're not going to be able to continue on with your business if some disaster does strike. So very critical step. Get that sandbox system out there so you can start testing those servers. And it's a pretty automated process. I mean, once you click a few buttons and tell it to restore, you walk away and you come back and check on it a couple hours later. So you don't have to sit there and babysit it and just, hey, it works or it doesn't work. When you're looking at your actual data server, some things to look at is the replacement server. Assuming you had some disaster hit and it took out all your systems and all your servers, the new replacement servers you get, are they going to be powerful enough? Most of the time, yes. You're probably going to replace it with something newer, with more horsepower, more memory, more storage. More in line with that, that may change is the new server, is it the same operating system as the old server? That's a critical situation because as software comes out, as new versions of Vault come out, they don't always support the latest operating system. Autodesk may not have tested it or certified it as of yet, as of the release of the newest software. So you have to check to see if your operating system is even supported by the Vault configuration that you're going to be installing or upgrading to. The service pack level of that operating system is equally as critical. You may be running 2012 on both servers, but the old one might have had a newer service pack that the, that the new one hasn't gotten yet. So that can run into a situation. Also, will you be able to give the new server the same name as the old server? Sometimes that can create a hiccup in the process, especially if your naming convention changes after you have restored a vault backup. Once you start changing IP addresses and changing names, all of this runs on top of a SQL database. When things like the IP address and the server name gets monkeyed with, things tend to go haywire with SQL and it doesn't recognize the system that it's installed on and thinks there's a problem, so it won't work, it won't operate. So it's always a bad idea to do naming after a restore. You want to get those naming conventions in place before a restore is ever done. More things to consider with that database is the installation of SQL. It has to be the same edition, version, and service pack as before. It can restore from previous versions, so long as that SQL edition is supported by Autodesk. So, for example, if your old system was a SQL 2005, your new system was SQL 2008, that's supported for certain versions of Vault. Old system might be SQL 08, new system might be SQL 2012, again, supported by certain versions of Vault. You can't go the other way. So, your new system cannot be an 08 because you haven't updated it yet 
and your old system be a 12, a 2012 SQL, because it got updated. They won't restore in that fashion. You want to make sure the new system has a at least a matching SQL version to the old system. And when we say matching, we're, again, not just talking about the version numbers. You have to look at that service pack level as well. If the old system was 2012 service pack 2, your new system is 2012 service pack 1, it's not going to restore that data. SQL is pretty particular about that thing. Um, if you're using an existing database, this doesn't come up very often. Once in a blue moon, it might creep its head in. But you want to make sure and log in to uh, the SQL Management Studio tools. Check the security on the Vault Sys user and make sure they have ownership of the Vault databases. Just so everybody can see where that is, logging into SQL Management Studio under the under the security folder, under logins, you will see a Vault Sys user. When you do a properties on that and check the user mapping, you'll notice whatever Vault databases are restored on that system, you'll see them listed and this Vault Sys user must be a database owner of the Knowledge Vault Master and the Vault databases that are in play. So looking at the restore process, obviously you want to make sure you double check all your steps, go through the readme's very carefully. If you're ever in doubt, holler at us. That's what we're here for. A couple of little hiccups that can come in. Uh, some service packs that get installed, whether it's for the OS or for SQL or for Vault, uh, some of those might require a data migration. Some of them won't. The system will not always prompt you for a data migration either. So that's where the readme's really come in. Also, some service packs for third-party applications can do the same. Uh, some might need an, a migration, some do not. Again, revert back to the readme's of those. And what we're referring to there is things like .NET, C++. Uh, I mentioned .NET 4.6 because there's a there was a separate um, little gotcha that would get some users doing the installation of AutoCAD Electrical 2017. It did not support .NET 4.6. You had to have 4.5. But a lot of people would have 4.6 because it was automatically pushed out by Microsoft. So we'd have to go in, blow away 4.6, put 4.5 on there, then you can install Electrical, and then you can put 4.6 back on there. .NET is very weird, as most everybody has learned. Also, it's all about the KVM, the Knowledge Vault Master. That is the pivotal stone of all of this. Without a good, validated, solid KVM, things aren't going to work right. Your vault databases may not import. So a lot of companies will have, again, secondary and tertiary backups of their vault backup. So when they take a backup, they'll copy that out somewhere and copy that out somewhere. Because data integrity and data corruption, it happens. Power surges happen. All kinds of freak accidents can happen that can corrupt some of that data. All of your restores must match the date of the Knowledge Vault Master restore. If those get out of sync, things get a little haywire and sometimes the data won't restore. The file store location. You want to make sure that file store location is empty and that you have enough space. If you don't, then the restore process is going to stop prematurely. It's not going to restore any data. Again, this is an all or nothing process that happens. If you are creating a new restore location, don't give it the same name as the vault. One practice that we kind of all employ on the Hagerman side is we will name the file store location, we'll name the folder of it, we'll say something like vault underscore file store underscore and then the vault name. Now we might shorten that a little bit, you know, v underscore fs for file store underscore vault name depending on the length of the name just to keep things a little bit more compact. But that at least avoids you naming it the folder structure of the same name as the vault that you're trying to restore. I've said it a couple of times up to this point kind of reiterated in here, you know, how many vaults can you restore? All or nothing. 
you can't pick a single vault out of many that have been backed up. You can't pick out one vault and just say, just restore that one. It's not going to work that way. It's an all or nothing process. When you go to create that restore operation, you'll be presented with the dialog box you see here. It's going to let you know that all databases and file stores, say that again, databases and file stores are going to be wiped out. Any of them it finds in that directory structure, it's eliminating them before it restores that backup. So if you got something in there you need to keep, you're going to lose it in this process if you don't have it backed up somewhere else. So when you get into versions of backups, that can play into the situation as well. This comes up more often when we see a sandbox environment being tested. The production server may be Vault Server 2017 or Vault Server Pro 2017. And the sandbox might be Vault 16, basic. When that happens, it's not going to restore that 17 production backup onto the 16 sandbox. So you got to look at the backup contents uh, file that is generated with the backup to see what version created it. So that is located in the path you see uh, on the screen. Wherever your backup folder is stored, you'll see the name of the vault backup folder here, generically named vault backup, with the year, the month, the date, and the hours, minutes, seconds, a.m. and p.m. So every backup it generates, it will put under this folder and just keep indexing name, month, date, and time. So in that backup folder, you'll see a backup contents XML. Inside that XML, near the very top, you'll see the version numbers that created that backup. These version numbers are not very specific to say Vault 2017, Vault 2016, blah, blah, blah. For that, you've got to do a little searching on Google. So looking at these version numbers for vault, which vault do they equate to? Now the link that's on the screen, it's changed two or three times in the past couple of years. If you're taking a screenshot of this right now or you're jotting down this link, be aware it could change in the next few months. If it does, just go to Google and type in Autodesk vault version numbers or build numbers, either way. And it'll take you straight to this page here. So looking at the previous slide, my backup contents, 22.0.56.0. So when I scan down through the list, I can see, okay, that's done with Vault Pro Server 2017 RTM. So no service packs or hotfixes have been applied to this vault. Again, that's pretty critical. If you have a sandbox system and a production system, and the production system has all of the latest service packs and everything installed on it, but your sandbox does not, even though it's the same version of Vault, 17 and 17, Pro and Pro, the backup's not going to restore. You've got to get all of those same service packs and hotfixes on that sandbox. Let's throw a little bit of a hook in here with replicated environments. So one of the options for the higher flavors of Vault is site replication. Depending on your company setup, you could have divisions scattered around the state, scattered across states, even a couple of divisions outside the country uh, borders. So multi-site replication might be something that you're going to employ or already employing. The file store, when you're in a replicated situation, it can be restored from any backup because the ADMS console is going to go through a validation process as part of that restore. You'll also have the Autodesk Vault file servers installed and configured somewhere out on your network, wherever your replicated or your subscriber sites are located. Um, only one of those file servers can validate that file store at a time. So if you have one centralized ADMS and four file servers, you have to wait for all four of them to validate. And they have to do it sequentially. They won't all do it at the same time. They won't do it in parallel. 
when you're working with a multi-site file store replication, the ADMS will replicate the entire file store between the sites. That can take a while, depending on the size of your vault and the size of your file store. Only really two options to get around that. You can tweak and limit what folders are getting synced as part of this replication, or you can just save everything on an external hard drive and ship it out or fly it out to the next site and copy it to the server. A lot of times that can be quicker depending on the size and the speed of your network. Just a quick screenshot of the replication folder. When you're setting up replication in the vault, you have to specify the location of the uh, SQL replication to use. On the publisher system that's pushing the information out, after you enable that replication option, you'll have to set up a subscriber server in the ADMS console. Once the subscriber has been set up, then the SQL servers on both ends, they both have to have SQL agent jobs created. This can start to get a little complicated. So the bottom end of this is multi-site replication. Sometimes it can be easy, sometimes it can be a little messy. Various things plug into this. Again, site locations, whether you're inside the U.S. or some's inside, some are outside, maybe some are across the pond, you get into a latency issue. Various little things can plug into this equation to make it complicated. So when it comes down to something like this, if you're doing this and the wrong settings are used, your data might not get replicated from the publisher to the subscriber. In that situation, you run the risk of losing some data. So what we suggest is give us a holler, let us help you out, make sure everything is dotted and crossed that needs to be, make sure everything is set up per Autodesk recommendations and standards, and then we can move forward with replication backup and restore. going to throw into this little mix the Hagerman connection products for Vault. As I mentioned in one of the earlier slides, uh, we have programmers on staff. We've been doing software development for 15 years. And we've come up with a series of little plugins that work with the Vault and some of them work inside the Vault. Backup connection is one of the newest ones we've come out with that sends out alerts through email to whomever you designate, and it gives a status of the backup. Also gives a status of how long it's been since you had a backup, and the status of the latest backup, what got backed up if it succeeded or failed. You also have QVP connection. It's basically a search, view, and print component. This is ideal for shop floor systems that need access to the vault database. Again, user level control, they cannot check out anything, they cannot make edits, they cannot change anything. It is simply search and print. Autoplot is a batch plotting program that plugs into vault. It's basically like the existing batch plotting capabilities that are, there, that are already there in vault, but on steroids. You get more options, more controls. Lifecycle connection gives you email notifications when you're working with Vault Workgroup or Pro and you have instituted the Vault life cycles, changing file statuses from work in progress to review to release to obsolete. Lifecycle, lifecycle connection bridges the gap of that notification process to send out email notices to the affected parties to say, hey, these files have been moved or pushed to a different lifecycle. Then Project Connection is for managing broader scope engineering projects and drawings and files. One of the things that always comes up is, or one of the questions that comes up is, why did the backup ever fail? Everything looked good, why did it fail? It could be something as simple as it wasn't set up correctly, uh, or it was never validated. Personally, that is one of my pet peeves anytime I do a backup. I will always choose validation because it decreases the risk of that backup being a failed backup. Also, you have hardware failures and software issues that can play into this. Might have IT staff turnover, training for that new hired. 
either didn't get enough training or didn't get any training at all. Just, hey, we got this backup running out there and let it go. Also, backups are sometimes not set to run automatically or people don't watch them. They fail for various reasons. Passwords get getting changed. If anybody changes the administrator password of the vault, the backup scripts that we put in place utilize that admin user for vault. And we have that password set in the backup script. If somebody goes into vault and changes that, then it needs to be changed in the backup script as well. Another thing is the media that you're backing up to. The disk gets too full. In conjunction with that, the Vault situations I've walked into to where the backup fails, about half of those situations are various issues you see here. Of that half, another half of those, so probably 25% 25 25 of the backups I've seen fail, have been for the very bottom item. Disk quotas have been used on that source designation or source destination disk. Uh, it could be a new disk that got installed, a new hard drive that got installed, and part of the IT procedure might be to set up disk quotas to make sure somebody doesn't eat up all the space throwing a bunch of junk data on there. Completely understandable. But for a vault backup, it shuts things down. So that's been 25% of the failures that I've seen walking into a vault upgrade or even a new vault install and backup situation. So when you're backing up the vault, Pretty straightforward running through the ADMS console. Just a few screenshots and then I'll show you live backing up and restoring. So you can choose whether it's a full or incremental backup if you're working with work group or pro flavors of Vault. If it's the basic version, your only option is a full backup. There's a checkbox right here for validating the backed up files. That is one of my pet peeves. You have your backup path that you're going to back it up to. And then backing up standard content center libraries. Again, if there are no customized libraries, and engineering is going to be who knows this, if they've not customized any of the content center libraries, you don't necessarily have to back them up. I mean, they're going to be factory installed libraries. For me, it's a lot of times quicker to just download those and re-import them back into the ADMS console than it is to wait and back up as built libraries to the vault backup. <clears throat> you can also choose to ignore any replicated files when you're dealing with multi-site replication. Looking at the backup size, it is not simply databases that are being backed up. It is databases and the file store, as I mentioned previously. The size of these folders can get quite large. Looking at this one here, we're pushing close to a gig in this one backup. And file content, uh, 1,400 files and 1,200 folders. That's, to me, that's minimal of what could be in there. Quick snapshot of the databases that are being backed up as part of the Vault backup. You'll see the KVM, the Knowledge Vault Master, is in there as well as the various Vault databases. And looking at the backup script, this is a little bit more, I'm sorry, not backup script, the uh, backup contents XML showing what version uh, was used to create that backup. On the backup connection, some of the features that uh, it provides, automatic daily reports of what happened to that vault backup, the status of it. Again, it can send those reports to various members that you choose and build into a list of recipients. The information you get is the number of the vault backup folders that it found, the status of the full or incremental and incremental should be uh, vault backups, date and time of the backup, the number of vaults in each backup, the number of files and folders within the backup, and total disk space consumed. So this one report's giving you a large snapshot of some critical information. You can start to see when your disk is getting full and you can start running some numbers and saying, okay, yeah, that, I'm, I'm guessing we got probably 1,500 folders. That looks about right. It backed up 1,610. So a little bit of a status check and sanity check on what your backup is doing. It will issue a warning if there's not been a backup when performed in a certain number of days. 
and also when the disk space on that drive gets low or near a critical level. The backup connection will run under a Microsoft scheduled task and it supports all the levels of Vault, Vault Basic, Workgroup, and Pro. Some of the advantages of using the backup connection. Key critical personnel get notification of what's going on with those backups. Also, it allows engineering a small little window into the status of those vault backups. So many times we will walk into a corporation and the engineers will have no clue about the vault backup whatsoever. In a lot of sense, that's good, and in some sense, that's bad. Somebody in engineering needs to at least know do we have a good backup? If there is a disaster that happens, IT is going to have your hands full already. Engineering at least to be at least needs to be able to tell somebody, yes, we have a good backup. Here's the last bit of detailed information I had on that backup from three days ago. Uh, corrective action can be taken immediately because again, all this is done through emails. We're always on our mobile devices checking emails and meetings and everything. Your risk of losing your data is going to go down. Maybe you better not sleep, maybe not with all the other fires you're having to put out, but it's worth taking a look at. So let's take a quick peek at some of this live. So what I'm looking at here is a pretty simple vault on my machine. I have a vault database with some files in it, not very many, only 1,500 files in here. The database size itself is about 250 megs. So the process to get a backup, the manual process to get a backup of this, is through the server console, just using the tools pull down, going to backup and restore, and choosing the backup operation. Once you choose backup, again, you're choosing if it's a full backup or an incremental backup. Your backup path can be local to the C, out to a network drive, some kind of cloud share if you wish, as long as it's on your system network on your local network, you should have access to it. So in here, I'll just specify a new backup folder as the parent location. Validation does take a little more time when you, when you have this option checked. It runs through a check and balance uh, sheet, sort of, uh, to make sure that the database record exists for this file and that file exists in the file store kind of thing. Again, standard content center libraries, if it's just the out-of-the-box libraries, it's up to you if you want to back those up or not. But if it's a custom library and engineering is going to know that, if it's a custom library, absolutely you want to back that up. So just to make this quick and dirty for demo purposes, go ahead and finish the backup uh, task. It's going to run and generate that backup. Now, on a very small vault like this, 1,500 files, maybe a minute and a half at most, maybe two minutes if the system's running slow and taxed with other things. Bigger the vault, obviously it's going to run longer. Uh, one question that comes up is, can you predict how long it's going to run? Unfortunately, no. We, we, there's no standard metric yet of, okay, if it's, a thousand files, it's this long. If it's 500,000 files, it's this long. If it's a million files, it's this long. That metric does not exist. And there's too many factors that go into play here to, in order to try to accurately predict this. So right there, that might have been a minute and a half to two minutes. It's done. You do have access to a log file that just gives you the basic status of that backup and what was touched. then a prompt that it's completed successfully. Okay, now you don't want to sit here every day and do this manually. So under that workflow, you can implement various backup scripts. So looking at a full vault backup, granted it's a little verbose, there's a lot of terminology in here that can be read through and omitted, and this is kind of an all-encompassing full backup script. Getting down to the bare bones of this thing is down here. Uh, we will set up certain uh, parameters in here, such as the ADMS console location, the backup location, if it's an incremental or a full, uh, if it's a 
what or what drive we're going to back up to, what path we're going to use, what vault account we're going to use, and any vault password that's in play. Hopefully there is one. Also, whether or not you're going to restart SQL Agent, SQL Server, or IIS. Not required, but sometimes you may want to do it as part of kind of a system maintenance routine. And you can plug all that in to the uh, backup script. Getting down to the actual command line, you see that we will change the directories to the ADMS console location called out in the parameters above. We will specify the backup log location. We will initiate the backup or the we'll initiate the command line, the command line syntax for the ADMS console. The operation will be a backup, then the backup full location, then the vault user account, vault user password. There's the validation switch to validate the databases and the file store then the log location, and then the silent switch so that there, there's no dialog boxes or anything like that that you need to click through. This is a little bit more lengthy of a script. This is the incremental version of the script. Everything's identical except for the actual command callout. When you run through the command line process, you still invoke the console, the backup operation, the accounts, validation, and then after validation, you specified that it's an incremental backup. Without any kind of flag or switch there, then it's going to run a full backup. But if you solely want an incremental, you plug in that switch and that's all you're going to get. Then you have another option of creating cascade backup folders. Uh, some places will want a location A or a backup A, a backup B, a backup C, so on and so forth. You can use the backup script to do that as well, just simple uh, DOS directory commands to make a directory, make a directory, rename a directory, move a directory, delete a directory, whatever you want to do. The actual command line itself for the backup process is no different. You're just setting up different folder paths for that A, B cascading location. Using the backup scripts in conjunction with a task scheduled item in Windows, you can create a scheduled task. I would always set it to run under the local admin user account. Domain controller, you could do that as well, but local admin is usually better. Also, you want to set it to run whether that user is logged on or not and always run with highest privileges. As far as the triggers go, that trigger is going to be up to you to determine how often, how frequent you're going to run this process. Uh, as of as for mine, I'm running it you know 11 p.m. every night on a Sunday. Your process may determine that okay, we need this every other day, every three days, twice a week, whatever works. I chose to edit that that trigger, and now it's thinking hard about it. You can also create the schedule task through the ADMS console. I'll show that in a second. Uh, this is going under the manual workflow. Uh, actions tab, of course, it's going to start that backup script that you've engineered. Any kind of special conditions to take on and any kind of special settings to take on. If you run through the console itself, under the tools menu, there is a scheduled backup operation. What that will do is it will allow you to choose your backup location, your backup log file, your account and password, if it's a full backup, what your occurrence frequency is, content centers, validation, replication, what day, or if it's an incremental, you can do an incremental backup as well with the same option. And then once you do that, it will automatically create that scheduled task and backup script for you. So either way you want to run with it, it'll work. The actual restore process is all manual inside of the ADMS console. So once you get Vault installed on your server again, it's going to be blank. It's actually going to ask you to create a new Vault to begin with. You can just create a generic Vault. doesn't matter because it's going to be wiped out during the restore. So once it's up and running, again, go to the backup and restore page, you're going to choose the restore option. 
step through the prompts. If it's a full restore or an incremental restore, when you're working in an incremental situation, the full restore has to be done first, then you can restore the incremental backups. Hopefully you won't have too many. You're going to choose what directory that you're going to restore from. So I'll go back out here and find my Vault Backup Husky directory. Select your file store location and database restore locations. You can choose the default locations, but if you've changed servers and your drive letter has changed names, this might not work too well. So you might have to come in here and tweak and adjust uh, to suit. Once you click Finish, there it is. It's going to prompt you and say, everything that you've got in place is going to be wiped out. So I hope you're ready for this. So again, this is why we say it's an all or nothing process. You can't single out one vault to restore amongst many. When you say yes, go ahead and wipe it out. The restore process will complete. I didn't finish. That's from a previous backup that I tried to run. I canceled it out. So once it runs, it will log back into this situation. If you're restoring from an older vault and you log into your newer vault, it will prompt you to do a database migration. That's not uncommon. But usually from 17 to 17, even service packs, give or take. You might get prompted to do a migration, you might not. Okay, with that being said, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. We'll address questions in the GoToMeeting Manager. I hope everyone enjoyed today's presentation and got some useful information out of it. If you have any further questions that don't get answered today or addressed today, by all means, contact your Hagerman sales rep. Uh, we can have another web session privately with you to discuss your, your questions, concerns, issues. If you're having problems, you can buy services from us to help you get through those problems, get a backup in place. If you have a disaster situation happens and you need a restore uh, done for you, we can absolutely do that. We can do it on site or we can do it remotely. It's entirely up to you. So at this time, I want to say thank you to everyone for attending the session. Again, I hope you enjoyed it and got some information out of it, and I will begin addressing the questions in the question uh, window of the GoToMeeting Manager.